Hello again YouTube and welcome to a, another video. This time we've got a bit of an update for you um, about the Casio SPF 70 that I've, um, that I've got. I've uh, had this watch since I think 2004 and I have posted a previous video uh, about a year ago actually and um, the strap has perished on it and um, I was kind of shouting out to people seeing if there was another alternative uh, any on eBay or the usual sites because um, the the strap um, as I will demonstrate here uh, is completely and utterly perished um, like I say it is 15 years old so it's only to be expected and I guess that Casio can't um, be expected to uh, service their watches for uh, forever kind of thing um, but that was the only thing that was wrong with it um, unfortunately like you see this uh, yeah the end of the strap here is complete off completely knackered. I've, I've tried to uh, glue it a few times, but it's uh, it's just uh, gone uh, beyond that now. Anyway, uh, about a couple of weeks ago, I had a post on that video saying, are you still interested in looking for a strap for it? Um, because I was at the time going to put it up on eBay to see how much I could get for the watch. And so I replied and said, yeah, of course I am. And um, Joanna uh, had a titanium version of this. Now there's nothing different really about the head of the watch but there is the strap um, which I've now put onto this watch. The donor watch that this came off of is um, this one here if I can get it round, round the right way. Um, and there are some subtle differences. One you'll notice is that the uh, little pip at the 12 o'clock is red on the titanium and blue on the uh, rubber strap version. Uh, apart from that, there are very, very, very subtle differences. Um, the uh, button, I think, was probably chrome, although the chrome's uh, worn off of it. Um, and as you can see, the uh, this surround here is like a uh, it's like a titanium colour. Uh, whereas on the, uh, the the rubber strap version, it's uh, silver. Um, so yeah, a couple of uh, minor differences there. Oh, by the way, yeah, these um, pieces here are titanium on the titanium version, and I think they are brushed uh, aluminium or something like that on this uh, on the rubber version. Um, that side of the strap, as you can see, is still intact, although the uh, the keep as um as seen better days as well. I say I just wish I could get hold of another rubber strap because this donor watch actually um was in a lot better shape than I uh, than I first of all thought it would be. Um little bit uh, roughness uh, in the, uh, the 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 bezel and a little bit of looseness and whether you can just see that moving round. Oh sorry it's gone out of focus. Um yeah it's moving around a little bit a couple of scratches on the uh, on the crystal on the uh, on the mineral crystal uh, but apart from that a completely functioning fantastic uh, watch uh, which is why I love these two ones so much again a little bit of scratching on the side there uh, another difference is again whether you can make that out uh, is the name underneath there SPF 70T the T I assume uh, denotes titanium uh, and on this uh, one here like I said I've taken the strap off of it so you can see the back and everything um, it is SPF 70 no T on this one uh, I could have swapped the backs out but I just thought well I'll keep everything the same with this head of the watch um, and keep everything the same with this head of the watch and I just swapped the, um, the, uh, the straps around now, when I say I just swapped the, the the straps around, if any of you out there have ever tried to um, swap these straps, uh, I don't know who invented the straps for this particular watch, um, but Heath Robinson um, springs to mind. I know it's very, very nice to have an integrated strap onto the watch head, um, but the amount of hoops that you have to uh, go through to try and change uh, the strap is unbelievable. Uh, let me just try and give you a bit of a flavour for how uh, tricky and complicated a... Uh, I don't think um, they could have made it any more complicated, Casio, if they, uh, if they tried. So this, uh, let's just say this is the regular rubber strapped version as the uh, rubber strap is on. There are two holes uh, in this plastic lug here um, and two spring bars go through the lug. Whereabouts is the other one? There it is. 
they are slightly different lengths as well. Uh, so you have to uh, get that right as well because then, let me just take them out again, that section of the strap goes on. You then put the spring bars through. That then locks it in place like that. And then this cover plate uh, goes over the top. Now, it is exceptionally fiddly to try and get that cover plate to fit. And there are two holes, you can see the one that's already fitted there, that um, the two uh, spring bars locate into. And that obviously secures the strap in place. But it is massively, massively um, uh, difficult to, to get those all to line up and everything to, um, to work. In addition to that, when I took this off, um, if I just turn to the titanium version, I suddenly realised that the titanium version, as you can see, if that will focus, please focus, yeah, just on the end there, has only got one uh, hole and not two. And it's not the fact that um, we're only using the, the, the bottom one, it is a completely different fitting on the bottom there just to um, let's see one is much 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 wider than the other as well but luckily there is an insert I uh, say so I've not taken these off because it's a um, it's a faff to uh, to get it back in again there is an insert that attaches on similar to this but at the end of the plastic version there is just this one hole I don't know that I'm explaining this particularly well but so there's this with another third single hole on the end of it that makes the watch end look like this. And then you can attach the um, end of the uh, titanium bracelet um, with just a single straight uh, spring bar. Again, that spring bar is very, very, very small. Um, in fact, I've misplaced it just for the time being. But anyway, it's about 16 millimetres, which um, if you know your watch uh, straps and spring bars, 16 millimetres um, is quite small. Um, the titanium strap itself was uh, in reasonable condition, not too bad. You know, serviceable condition, there's a bit of play in it, uh, but that's fine. Um, but it was also quite scratched up, as was these, um, these end pieces as well. But luckily, I've got a, um, a titanium uh, polishing pad, which effectively is um, it's almost like a Brillo type um, pad. And um, I bought that back in the day for a Breitling Chrono Avenger M1 that I used to have, which was a fantastic watch. And again, if you know that watch, it's made out of titanium. I went on holiday with it, scratched the, um, the clasp up a couple of times, um, but this um, pad uh, completely removed those scratches. And of course, it's done the same with this titanium. Titanium is very, very strong um, and very light, but it's quite soft as well. Um, so you can mark it up fairly easy, which is, yeah, double-sided coin, I guess. Um, it'll uh, scratch up easily, but then those scratches will be removed easily as well. Uh, I need to um, go over it again, if I'm completely honest with you. And I should have actually done a video before and after, but I was so excited when this uh, strap turned up, I just thought I would get it on the watch. Um, so there we go, uh, an update for you. Um, the reason why I've also kept this head, the original head that I had, is that the bezel's a little bit smoother uh, whilst it does have a uh, slight scratch you can just about make that up on the uh, on the crystal there the donor watch um, while still perfectly serviceable has a few more scratches on it again completely understandable it's a 14 15 year old watch now so and it looks like this one's been worn and loved um, throughout its life which is uh, really 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 nice to see Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that um, that update. Um, this will keep on going now for probably the next 15 years uh, at least. The solar panel um, and the battery inside don't show any sign of, of wear. Um, it is coming up to winter time, so I'm expecting that. Um, uh, sorry about the focus here. It's the um, light reflecting off the skylights. Um, I am expecting that uh, battery indicator to go down to probably low. You've got low, medium and high. Uh, in the summer, it always um, remains on high, but yeah, it kind of hovers between medium and um, 
and low battery level here in the UK uh, around winter time. Uh, it does have a power save, which as you can see there is on. So if I'm not to wear it for a few days, it goes into um, power save mode. And I think in that mode, it can last for about six months without any charge in it at all. So that's one of the reasons why I love these watches. They're, uh, they are fantastic. And the size of the, um, the, uh, the time uh, is, is wonderful as, as well. Anyway, like I say, hope you've enjoyed the video and the update. Uh, thanks ever so much to uh, Joanne who saw the first uh, video. I hope uh, you, uh, you enjoy this second one. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, guys.